baby, you're muted. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar titled Keep It Real with Native Protein MS. I'm Xavier Gutierrez of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by Agilent. Now let's get started. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you would like during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. Please address each question to a specific speaker. We will answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. And if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. I now present today's speakers, Dr. Christian Klein, Product Manager of LC QDOF and IM QDOF at Agilent Technologies, and Dr. David Wong, Senior Application Scientist of LCMS Solution, the MSD Division at Agilent Technologies. For a complete biography on Dr. Christian Klein and Dr. David Wong, please visit the Biography tab at the top of your screen. Dr. D Dr. Christian Klein, you may now begin your presentation. Hello, I will welcome you today to uh, Agilent's virtual Mass Spectacular uh, event. And the topic of today is Keep It Real with Native MS. My name is Chris Klein, I'm the LCQ of and I'm Q of uh, Product Manager. And uh, together with David Wong, our senior application scientist, I will give today a brief overview or introduction into what can be done on Agilent's instrumentation with native MS. So on a first outline uh, of my talk, I um, want to present the biopharma solutions Agilent can offer, and then followed in by a bit uh, in-depth analysis of what the 6545XT advanced bio LCQ actually can do for the detection of large molecules. Second uh, and last part of this talk is uh, given by David about the native LCMS analysis of macular molecules, followed then by the characterization of antibody SI RNA conjugates by native MS, and then last, the native protein characterization using high mobility Q2. So going into the first level of uh, biopharma and where do actually native MS is needed for. And this is basically for everything related to biopharmaceuticals. Biopharmaceuticals, in its easiest definition, are any pharmaceutical drug products manufactured in, or extracted from, or semen synthesized from biological sources. This can include living cells, for example, reprogrammed T cells, but also somatic or germline gene therapy, like CRISPR or Cas9. Looking at other aspects, blood to blood components, thrombin, white blood cells, blood transfusions are also part of biopharmaceuticals and so are toxin and antitoxins. Our scenes, of course, uh, are a big group, but the biggest level uh, currently used for the manufacturing of um, drugs are recombinant proteins and antibodies. So examples for those classes are insulin and, of course, monoclonal antibodies. So when we talk about monoclonal antibodies, the first thing everybody notices, of course, is they are big. So just looking at the molecular weight, comparison uh, Herceptin, which is a drug used against breast cancer, uh, against Lipitor, which has a molecular weight of 559. So making that difference of 185,000 Daltons, 55 uh, Daltons is basically the same as comparing the two-story single family residential compared to the Empire State Building. And with that, of course, the analytical challenges are also growing exponentially and far more diversity within the structure. Different conformation isomers are possible and they all need to be properly characterized. Here comes Agilent into account where we are for integrated solutions. So shifting uh, from a biopharma development focus, which is less about an individual product, but more about an entire integrated workflow and the elements needed for success. So starting off from the sample preparation, uh, over here is shown uh, as a map, the separation, which can be done over uh, carrier electrophoresis or liquid chromatography, the detection, of course, on the 6545XD, data analysis, let it be bioconfirm or quant analysis, leading finally to the report. So basically from the first step, a researcher puts hand on measuring the samples, 
based on the sample prep to the final report, Agilent will be there with services and consulting with expertise. And also, of course, has the consumables and reagents to support the customers from A to Z. So starting now with the separation on here, basically the 1290 Infinity 2 UH Build C is a standard form because it allows us for more or less most of the applications being the most universal instrument. Let it be peptide mapping, which requires a very high level of back pressure compared to uh, intact protein analysis or maybe even glycan analysis. 1290 Infinity 2 is able to do this. Not to forget, of course, our 7100 uh, carry electrophoresis instrumentation. Again, an aspect of whatever is most suitable to the aspect, Agile is there to support the workflow. And of course, 2DLC is a very important differentiator because, again, looking into native analysis in itself, the first step typically are happening in very salt containing buffers, which by nature, are not comparable to mass spectrometry. But again, using now different technologies, orthogonal uh, separation, or desorting steps make it very easy to separate uh, first the isoforms and then either denatured or under MS compatible native conditions to the mass spec. This all goes together with various forms of columns, which are designed, as previously mentioned, for intact proteins, subunit, peptide mapping, glycan profiling, accurate analysis, charge variant analysis as well as also spent media analysis. And of course, the complexity goes even further if we're looking into the, all the different details on here. Again, looking here at the whole section of agile and biomolecule columns for CQA analysis, we basically cover all of the areas which a broad portfolio of different columns based really on the individual needs of the analysis. I want to step over now to the next aspect, which is uh, the detection. This is the analytical cornerstone for multiple biopharma workflows, as typically uh, the mass spec instrumentation of itself needs to deal with all the different workflow requirements. Let it be a small molecule, let it be something like a peptide, a glycan, or let it be a whole intact monoclonal antibody. The instrumentation needs to be able to perform all of this. The most important aspect of the 6545XT development was that its poor protein spectral clar uh, clarity requires a very low uh, top vacuum. This goes down to the 10 to the B minus 8 tor. The reason for that is that remaining nitrogen in the flight tube still leads to collision, and those collisions lead to later arrival times of the ion, leading therefore to a loss of information between the different glycophores, like glycinols. So maintaining an as clear spectra as possible is fundamental for the analysis of um, monoclonal antibody. I will go a bit later more about a one-click optimization for large molecule detection using a swarm altitude. Most instruments are not necessarily tuned for monoclonal antibodies. They are done for yielding and resolution specs, sensitivity specification, but doing an application tune on that gives us, and I show more example later to this, large opportunities to optimize the instrument performance for those molecules. And then, of course, we have in the native arena also very large molecule complexes, which requires a variable mass range up to 30,000 uh, M over Z. Again, some examples later to come. With it all, it comes to protein performance verification at install and a quick start protein buffer. Again, Agilent keeps the users from A to Z and enables them with a familiarization as fast as possible to get the results they require. Another aspect of it is the ease of maintenance. Every time an instrument needs to get uh, vented for any kind of cleaning procedures, valuable time is lost. And one of the most uh, aspects which requires cleaning, again, for native MS, is the capillary. So on this, we specifically developed a vent-free capillary removal, which allows us to remove the capillary, clean it, and immediately afterwards that be operatable again without any downtime loss. As mentioned before, the large molecule swarm autotune uh, is an extremely important and powerful tool to really move the needle further. We see here on the same instrument, the same sample run once in blue uh, with a large molecule swarm autotune and in red with our standard mass uh, swarm autotune. Not much difference, of course, in the resolution of the glycophones, but we can see a more than 4x increased signal, and this is only at about 3,000 m over z. The impact of the large molecule tune evolves further and further, higher the M over Z range. Uh, so 
So this is an example really of smart designing of the instrumentation, which allows us to be application based and on the needs of the different application, tune the instrument accordingly. The well, next example is shown here for um, the NIST monoclonal antibody. Again, this is now uh, just shown under denaturating conditions to prove the statement which we made about the separation of glycoprotein. What we call internally a kind of a peak to hump ratio, which is in the raw spectra, the abundance between the glycoform and the non-resolved part of here. The low vacuum um, of our uh, 6545 XDs allows us here to really separate well beyond what's typically seen in raw mass spectra. Uh, mass spectra. This is a typical example here of just a 0.5 microgram of uh, the NIST monoclonal antibody, a very short um, chromatography of our uh, PLRPX 1000 column, um, and the impact on here is shown really very well separated. It's an effect of this great separation we of course also maintain mass accuracy and again, the uh, identification of um, post-translational modification, like here, the loss of uh, NSO2 glucose. So why I'm showing those denaturating conditions, because later on, David will show you native uh, examples, which are extremely close in uh, the resolving of the glycoform and the mass accuracy under those uh, well-standard denaturating conditions. But again, this is important to understand where the baseline is. And once the baseline is established, to move beyond this, and David will show the example for this later. So one of the last things I uh, want to show off, because it's always uh, the gold standard, how does an instrument perform actually with uh, GROWEL? Uh, GROWEL is an 802 uh, kilodalton 40 more uh, non-covalent uh, complex. And it's principle though the gold standard, because it comes up as <coughs> The, the 14 mer at around 11 to 13,000 m over z, and once inducing fragmentation, the 13 mer comes even higher. This uh, standard is readily available, and it can be used there for determining how is the overall instrument performance for those complexes. So um, what has been done here was to uh, use nanoflow at 200 nanoliters per minute, very, very low uh, and uh, source conditions with uh, low dry gas flow, and uh, in order to induce a later um, fragmentation, uh, SF6 was used. So looking here at the mass spectra, exactly uh, as uh, said before, we see very well resolved with very good intensities and uh, signal to noise. Those are in this case, non-smooth spectra and uh, showing really how well those different uh, charge states are resolved and actually uh, moving exactly as previously said. Uh, up to uh, 13,000 uh, m over z. So the next step was then to uh, induce the, the fragmentation. And what we can see here now, uh, and this is uh, done with an R&D prototype smoothing functionality, fragments of um, the 13 mer of GROEL very well, uh, again, uh, resolved to nearly the baseline. So again, this was just the proof of concept. Yes, on our 45 XT, without any kind of modification or uh, self-made changes uh, to the optics or to the pressure regime, on the commercial available system, we can generate data of the quality, which gives us really the um, basis of now being confident to move native MS to the next level. And rather doing this with NanoFlow, uh, David Wong uh, and others, develop methods to do this with standard flow, and he will comment more over now the next um, part of this talks over it. So with this, I want to uh, thank you for your attention and really want to give the floor to David now for uh, his part. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Hi, everyone. Thanks again to this Agilence Biospectaculars virtual event. My name is David Wong, and I'm an application scientist at Agilence focusing on the biopharma application development. In the second half of the presentation, I would like to talk about how Agilent is focused on uh, providing automated native protein analysis workflow using the regular LC flow condition. Native protein analysis by MassSpec has a broad range of applications. This analytical technique can be used for protein higher order structural probing when it combined with the eye mobility mass spec. 
It can also be used to analyze the non-covalent protein-protein interactions, protein complexes, protein aggregation analysis, and biotherapeutic samples such as antibody or antibody drug conjugate analysis. However, the native MS analysis is still facing tremendous analytical challenges. Without organic solvent and the acid to enhance the sample dissolution and ionization, native MS analysis of protein sample and neutral pH condition tend to have fewer charges per molecule and much lower abundances in mass spec signal at higher MOPC range. So to overcome these challenges, many sample prep and analytical techniques has been developed, such as the sample cleanup and the use of MS-friendly volatile buffer. Also, many people prefer to use the non uh, nano electric spray ionization approach in the native protein an analysis as it can increase the MS sensitivity. However, um, this has, it has been commonly uh, been observed that the neutral equal protein sample tend to aggregate easily under the unstable nanoflow rate conditions and cause the nano spray emitter to clog. Therefore, we introduce here a highly sensitive protein, uh, native protein analysis workflow using the regular LC flow conditions. Uh, no dedicated nano LC system is needed for this type of analysis. The workflow utilizes the Agilent's advanced bio size exclusion column and the 1290 Infinity 2 LC system uh, together with the 6545 XT to and followed by the data analysis in mass hunter core and biocontrol software with the maximum entropy for protein deconvolution. This is the typical LC condition for native protein analysis. To perform native MS analysis, it is quite crucial to preserve the protein sample at the neutral pH and volatile equal solution, such as the ammonium acetate. Therefore, sample desalting and buffer change are usually needed prior to the MS analysis. Once the sample are desalted, uh, the Agilent's advanced bio SCC column can be used for further sample separation, running at the isoquadric uh, mode with a full rate at 0 0.2 mil per minute. The runtime is usually under five minutes. For uh, the detailed information on the system setup, please refer to our net note. In order to validate uh, whether we can detect the native protein under the standard LC flow condition, we first analyze the myoglobin sample. In myoglobin, him is non-covalently attached to the globin through the hydrogen bonds and hydrophobic interactions. When the heme is attached to the globin, the protein is referred to as the uh, hollow myoglobin, which is in the, is the native conformation. As shown in the top figure, myoglobin is denatured in the organic or acid solvent. And under harsh MS source condition, most of the uh, native hollow myoglobin was denatured into uh, the apo myoglobin and heme. Our optimized native MS analysis of myoglobin clearly demonstrate that uh, the native conformation of myoglobin uh, was retained as shown in the bottom figure. Only a trace amount of dissociated heme could be detected. We then want to see how ionic strings of the SCC column mobile phase uh, affect the protein uh, native non covalent complex. This slide demonstrates the native MS analysis of alcohol dehydrogenate under two mobile phase conditions. Even though both mobile phase uh, were neutral pH, protein dissociation uh, product, the dimer or uh, other monomer were observed when ammonium formate uh, was uh, substituted for ammonium acetate in the mobile phase. Also, the charge state envelope uh, of the intact native uh, 
ADH at the 50 millimole ammonium uh, formate was shipped to the lower MOVZ range uh, compared to that in the 100 millimole ammonium acetate. Therefore, we believe that the 100 millimole ammonium acetate solution at pH 7 offered better structural protection to protein complexes during the native MS analysis. Now, let's look at how the native MS analysis behave on the monoclonal antibody. The top mass spectrum uh, represent a LCMS analysis of an antibody standard, the NIST antibody, using uh, the regular organic and acid solvent as a mobile phase. We call this as a denaturing condition. As you can see, the charge state the distribution of the denature uh, NIST antibody over the mass range of M over Z 2000 to 5000 and charges from um, 30 to 75. When we apply uh, the same high flow SCC LC method for the native uh, antibody and uh, MS analysis, so we got a charge envelope in the uh, range of M over Z 5000 to 10,000. Uh, as shown in the MS decomolulis spectrum on the right side. So we obtain a very narrow peak and excellent mass accuracy for all the uh, major GEICO forms. We also uh, achieved very good agreement uh, with the data from the uh, intact mis body analysis under both uh, MS conditions. Similarly, uh, the native MS analysis of the biotherapeutic bio drug, uh, the perceptin, and its antibody drug conjugate, the TDM1 uh, sample, was performed and compared. The top panel is the native MS uh, analysis of the intact perceptin, showing a nice uh, distribution charge envelope from 5,000 to 10,000. With the charge state between 15 to uh, 28. The most prominent charge state was at 24, which indicating that uh, intact receptin was in its uh, the native or the folded conformation. Also, we achieved a very uh, impressive low PPM mass accuracy and excellent resolution for all the type of form. Uh, of the receptin under the native uh, LCMS condition. The bottom panel shows that the native uh, lower and decomoluted MS spectrum of the TDM1. The average dark value uh, calculated using the bioconfirm uh, dark calculator was at 3.5, which is consistent with the dark value of the intact ADC reported by Genentech. Now we want to see if the native MS analysis method also works on the non-covalent protein complexes. We use another uh, protein uh, standard called the beta glyptosidase, which is a tetramer under its native conformation. The molecular weight of each monomer is about 116 kilodalton. Under the denaturing LC MS condition, only the monomer and also a small amount of dimer form can be detected. The bottom panel uh, shows that the native beta glyptosidase tetramer uh, with the charge state distribution ranging from M over Z 8,500 to 15,000 day delta. Um, and the decomoluted intact mass of this tetramer protein is about 465 kilodalton. We then want to see how far out we can detect the protein complexes using uh, this native MS analysis. We analyzed several of the classic uh, protein complexes standard, such as the pyruvate kinase, which is a tetramer, uh, glutamate dehydrogenase, a hexamer, and beta-glactosidase, beta a tetramer. Uh, by looking at the charge state uh, distribution of these complexes, we can get a low, lower charge state at much higher M over Z value. 
utilizing our large molecule swarm auto turn to dramatically improve the ion transmission of very large protein molecules, we can easily detect the protein complexes up to almost half a million Dalton. So this, uh, these are the excellent example of maintaining the structural integrity of the intact protein complexes. Now I would like to turn our attention to the native MS analysis of antibody RNA conjugate. Small interferon RNA, uh, we also called SI RNAs, are the promising type of RNA base uh, therapeutic drug that demonstrate the effectiveness on the gene silencing uh, through the RNA interferon technology. Using antibody as a delivery vehicle, uh, antibody RNA conjugate enable the delivery of SI RNA to the targeted cell surface. However, characterization of such intact antibody RNA conjugate uh, using the traditional LCMS method present a bio and bioanalytical challenges due to the weaker bonding between the SI RNA and the modified uh, antibody molecule. Therefore, uh, we have developed a novel LCMS method for the characterization of antibody and siRNA conjugate under their native condition. Antibody RNA conjugate were produced by site-specific conjugation between the pre-existing residues of a human IgG antibody and the RNA molecule. The chemical synthesis involved in partial reduction of the antibody and followed by the conjugation with the activated RNA molecule. The unreactively fire group of the uh, antibody was then modified uh, with the chemical reagents, not in, labeled here as the cat. Unreacted antibody uh, and also RNA, uh, the dot one molecule, which is the conjugate with one oligo molecule, or the DART2 uh, with the two oligo molecule uh, for antibody, and unreacted RNA molecule was then separated by the ion exchange chromatography. The purified R1 sample uh, was then uh, used for the mass spec analysis under the denaturing and the native condition. Again, here's the typical LCMS workflow for the protein analysis. Under the traditional LC condition on the left side of the uh, table, organic solvent and acid are usually used and protein uh, sample uh, are denatured. In order to characterize the antibody and RNA conjugate, native LCMS analysis is a must to preserve the integrity and also the native conformation of the molecule. So in this study, uh, we used the longer advanced bio SEC column, uh, which is the 300 millimeter, and also isocratic flow at uh, 0 0.3 mil per minute of the 100 millimole ammonium acetate uh, as the solvent for the better separation of the target R1 molecule and other impurities. This is the LCMS analysis of the intact unconjugated and uh, deglycosylate antibody control under the denaturing conditions. Um, the PORP column was used. So you can see a typical charge state distribution of the denaturing uh, antibody in the mass range of M over Z 2000 to 5000. Uh, so uh, as this was the fully deglycosylated antibody sample, so only one major protein uh, was detected. We also utilize the reverse phase LCMS analytical approach to analyze the, uh, the antibody RNA conjugate under the denaturing conditions. The top, the top panel shows the LCMS profile of the deglycosylated intact antibody RNA conjugate, the dot one sample. The middle window is the extracted ion chromatogram of the chromatography separated peaks over the retention time of 3.4 to 4.3 minutes. Um, so, so showing that several of the charge state distribution 
over the mass range of m over z 1000 to 4000. So this is indicating that many biomolecules uh, exist in the sample. So therefore, we perform the MS data deconvolution and mass matching uh, to the protein uh, or the uh, oligonucleotide sequence on each of the four LC uh, peaks over this retention time period. Uh, to obtain as much detailed information as possible, uh, the MS deconvolution mass range was set from 20 kilodalton to 160 kilodalton for the raw MS data of all four LC peaks. This bulk mass range should cover small proteins such as the antibody light chains uh, all the way up to the antibody RNA conjugate. After careful calculations, so many degraded and reduced antibody or the antibody oligo conjugate form were identified and label uh, in the figure. These are the results uh, for the LC peaks one and two. The structural assignment are based on the mass matching and hypothesis of the conjugation reactions. Uh, further investigation is needed to identify uh, the actual conjugation site of the, this molecule. And these are the peak two and four results. As you can see, um, there are modified antibody light chains, uh, modified antibody heavy chains with either the, the cap or the RNA molecule, half of the half of the conjugate, or the conjugate without uh, one light chain or two light chains. Only a trace amount of the intact antibody RNA conjugate could be detected. So this result indicates that most of the antibody RNA conjugate were dissociated under the denaturing LCMS conditions. As the conjugation reaction uh, was very really likely happened at the disulfide bound between the light chain and heavy chain, so it broke the strong disulfide bound linkage and turned them into a weak uh, electrostatic interaction. So therefore, it's very difficult to detect the intact conjugate under the traditional LC MS uh, condition using organic or acid solvent. So that, that makes the native LC MS analysis an ideal analytical tool for characterizing the intact non-covalent or the acid labile antibody RNA conjugate. So here is the LC MS profile of the intact unconjugated and the glycosylated antibody control under the native conditions. So the longer, uh, the long SEC column was used here. Um, as we demonstrated earlier, the typical charge state distribution of the antibody under the native LCMS condition is in the mass range of M over Z 5,000 to 10,000. Again, our Q-top source condition uh, were optimized and uh, excellence uh, quality of the native MS spectra uh, with less than five ppm in mass error was uh, obtained. The uh, 6545 XT advanced bio LC Q-top system demonstrate excellent sensitivity for antibody RNA conjugate under the native LC MS conditions. Approximately five micrograms of the conjugate sample were injected onto an uh, advanced bio SEC long column. So we used the 12 minute isocritic flow at the 0.3 mil per minute here. A longer uh, chromatography run method was developed to optimize the sample separation and to maximize the sensitivity of detection. The top window shows that uh, native SCC column separated intact the glycosylated uh, antibody RNA conjugate. So two major LC peaks uh, with the MS as charge envelope ranging from uh, the M over Z 5,000 to 10,000 uh, were detected. The deconvoluted uh, spectrum revealed that uh, there are two major forms of antibody RNA conjugate in each LC peaks. 
pick one contains the dot one with one cap and also dot one with three cap. And this the decomorphic MS spectrum of pick two. So in here you can see in the body with two cap was the most abundant uh, uh, molecule. And the dot one with one cap uh, was the carryover from the pit one. As I mentioned uh, during the introduction, the native protein analysis plays a key role in the protein higher order structural coping uh, by the eye mobility mass spec. Uh, the Agilent 6560 eye mobility QTOP is considered as the coolest uh, commercial available eye mobility system because it can minimize the eye inhibiting effect uh, from the mass spec system and therefore can preserve the native protein structure much better. This is an animation which illustrates the basic operational uh, principle of the eye mobility within the conventional chip tube. Uh, design. Uh, nitrogen is used as the main buffer gas in the chip tube, and the chip cell operates at the uh, uh, pressure of the photo. And the direct current uh, uh, electric field is used to drive the ion from the uh, chip funnel uh, into the chip cell and then into the rear funnel. So let's say uh, we have two compounds. One has more uh, dense ball shape and the other is more open uh, fan shape. So when the iron gate opens, the ball shape molecule has fewer gas collision and arrive the detector faster, while the, uh, the fan shape molecule has more gas collision and uh, come out later. So therefore the ball shape, which is uh, the native uh, molecule, uh, has a less drift time and a smaller uh, collision cost uh, section value. The ion heating effect uh, from the Agilent 6560 ion mobility QTOP LC MS system uh, has, uh, has been minimized, uh, which is uh, critical for maintaining the uh, native protein conformations. Here we are showing the IM analysis of cytochrome C uh, using various uh, uh, mass spec source condition, uh, the energy. So by changing the trap voltage, we can change the protein uh, conformation from its native stage, which is you know, S1 uh, stage, to a various degree of the nature stage, the S2 to S5. By comparison uh, with the other IM systems, the Azurean Super IM system require a much lower energy uh, which minimize the ion heating effect that can cause the denaturation of the protein molecules. So these are the IM QTOP analysis of an antibody under the denaturing and the native LCMS conditions. Again, under the normal LCMS uh, condition, uh, with the higher uh, organic solvent or the acid in the buffer, uh, the native protein uh, conformation will be destroyed and um, as demonstrated here. Uh, under the native condition, uh, we use the 100 millimole ammonium acetate and pH 7. The antibody uh, is less, has less charges and it's the charges amount of a shift to a higher amount of C. So, um, so we also use eye mobility to uh, analysis to look at other uh, biotherapeutics. So the lutecimab is the monoclonal antibody can treat many diseases. As the patents covering this originator uh, product uh, is called also called the innovator um, was expired many years ago. So um, many uh, biopharma company has uh, produced the uh, uh, lutecimab, the biosimilar, or the bio, uh, the non-originator uh, biologics close. Um, so in this study, we use the eye mobility QTOP to compare the innovator and uh, and its biosimilar products. 
So even though the innovator and its biosimilar uh, have exactly the same protein sequence, the biosimilar seems to uh, have a slightly larger glycan modification groups uh, because it uh, depends on the where uh, the different expression holds. So for example, the CCS at the 27 charge stage molecule um, was the larger uh, for the biosimilar products, uh, which is highlighted in green. And also in the below the table here, you can see the comparison between the innovator and the biomolecular, uh, the similar biosimilar. So therefore, the eye mobility mass spec can provide not only the size, but also the molecular, molecular structural information on the biosimilar uh, in the biosimilar studies. Eye mobility can also be used to study the protein complexes or the protein-protein interaction under the native conditions. In this study, uh, 330 killed out in protein complexes, um, the, the hexamal, uh, bovine, uh, glutamate dehydrogenase was uh, successfully analyzed under the, the native condition. The charge state envelope of uh, GDH is shown in the mass range uh, M over Z of 8,000 to 10,000. So we have also successfully determined the CCS value of the 40 uh, charge states of the GDH, which is, is almost 12,000 square angstrom. Now I would like to share some of uh, my key learning uh, with you on how to optimize the MS data quality uh, and results during the native LC MS analysis. The first area is the, the sample prep. So I normally use the uh, sample buffer uh, with 50 to 100 millimolar uh, ammonium acetate at pH 7 uh, to dissolve uh, and dilute sample. And also uh, the offline dissolving uh, before the LC MS analysis is the must. So I normally use uh, the bio-spin cartridge for the desorting. Uh, for the LCMS data acquisitions, so I would recommend always analyze the freshly prepared sample. This is especially critical for antibody sample. And use the online SCC, uh, either the guard column or the long column for further sample separation or desorting. So run uh, LC in the isocratic mode with 100 millimolar ammonium acetate as a solvent. And for small proteins, uh, use the lower uh, dry gas or the sheet gas temperature uh, around 150 Celsius degree. And also we prefer to uh, perform the large molecules from order two before the data acquisitions. So in conclusion, we have uh, developed a complete and efficient workflow solution for native protein analysis. Uh, by running the large molecule swarm autotune, uh, we can improve the detection sensitivity over the extended mass range for the native intact protein complexes. We have also optimized the native LCMS condition for the intact antibody RNA conjugate analysis. Last but not least, utilizing our native protein sample prep method, along with the Agilent's high mobility Q-top system, we can preserve the native protein structure for their accurate CCS determination. For many biopharma-related analysis, we have created uh, an Agilent's biopharma webpage where you can find all kinds of useful information, such as many endnotes, uh, for sure, training video, as well as the uh, on-demand webinars. So hope this information can help you to improve your productivity and to obtain better results. Uh, with this, I want to thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Dr. Christian Klein and Dr. David Wong for your informative presentation. 
we will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have questions you would like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we'll get to your question. Now let's get started. The first question is going to be uh, for Christian. Uh, can you explain how you can get this large increase for monoclonal antibodies by just tuning? Sure. Um, so the reason for that is that um, for most uh, applications, small molecules are used. And for that, the mass resolution, so uh, the distinction between other uh, different isotopes, is extremely important. For large molecules like monoclonal antibodies, we don't have any more uh, the isotopic resolution. And with that, we actually are not dependent on the classic small molecule tune. So what we did instead was to use a tune which was solely based on the transmission of ions to get us the best sensitivity. And by that also in several elements in the ion optics uh, do show the best transmission for uh, large molecules. And so with this, all the combination of a tune um, <clears throat> and the addressing the, the um, optical uh, lenses particularly, uh, we were able to get a four to five X uh, sensitivity increase. Thank you. Uh, for the next question we have uh, for David, it's going to be, how much proteins do you normally need for the native MS analysis? Um, I normally use about um, like some microgram to about 10 microgram protein, depends on the protein sample. Um, however, I really, I haven't really tried to push the detection limit, uh, the sensitivity on the native MS analysis. But I, I guess it should be around the low uh, nanogram level. And what is the typical IM resolution for the 6560 IM queued off? Uh, the typical IM resolution for the 6560 queued off uh, is about 50. But uh, we we have the called the multiplexing technique. Uh, with that technique, we can push the IM resolution can go up to about 150. Okay, and looks like we have this last question here. Um, in the ion mobility part, you said that the drift times are much smaller compared to the native one. Can you please explain this? Uh, yes. Um, so when proteins under the nature uh, condition, the, the structure usually will turn from the packed ball ship uh, into the loose open structure which can have more charges onto the molecule. Uh, the sample I, uh, I showed earlier uh, for the IgG2, uh, we are looking at the different charge envelope. So on the denaturing uh, IgG2 has a charge envelope about 45 to 70, and the, na the native uh, charge envelope is about uh, 20 to 35. Uh, for the same charge ion, usually the drip time would be much larger uh, for the denaturing molecule. Well, thank you both for your answers. Do you have any final comments for our audience? Well, thank you very much for uh, the attention of uh, the seminar. And I really uh, hope that the data that uh, David showed gives you really confidence about uh, that a robust native uh, mass spec analysis is actually possible. And uh, with all the development we have done on the QTOF, with uh, um, all workflow consumables and reagents we supply for Magellan, we are really hoping mm -hmm. uh, to be a partner with you for uh, your research. And thanks again for uh, joining the seminar. Thank you. Well, Dr. Klein and Dr. Wong, thank you so much for your time today and your important research. Uh, before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand through June of 2021. Until next time, Goodbye.